Maria Lawrence and uh, superhero Mike Height uh, with uh, Mr. Hornby uh, out of the area at the moment. Mr. Height has uh, run to the rescue and purchased a uh, new ups for us. I'll install it uh, along with the help of Mr. Colin after the uh, the program is over today in about 25 minutes and hopefully everything will be back to normal the rest of the afternoon and tomorrow. He's a good man but I'm not going to let him be get off unscathed. Why did he not bring it in at 8 o'clock this morning? He didn't know about the problem at uh, well, 8 Well, that's immaterial. That's uh, Mike knows. Has <laughs> and now great he knew yeah. the problem. Bill, you need to give him some credit. He just oh, wants to give him some no, That's asking a lot. Me him and Mike height credit. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, for those of you on the radio and TV side, I, we uh, lost internet in the uh, interim, so we don't have the stream today. I apologize for that. Danny Staggers, elder care attorney at large in studio here for us. Uh, former monster football player in the Ivy League. <laughs> friend of the you Kennedys. You're a monster? You're a monster, Danny? He roamed the sidelines, side to side, treetop yeah. tall, wall to wall, man. In his shirt sleeve. In Take, shirt taking sleeve. running backs down and quarterbacks <laughs> along with the, for the ride there. Danny, good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you doing? Excellent. Always great to see you. Let me give this first uh, statement credit to John Lowry. So you all remember the song, Country Roads, Almost Heaven. Mm -hmm. So this man sees God walking through West Virginia one day. He said, God, what are you doing? He said, I'm working from home today. Ah, that's very nice <laughs> and there we well west virginia is it's a beautiful state and i want to thank you and john lowry came down to check out one of our playoff games at oakdale high school there i promise you next year it'll be earlier in the season it was too <laughs> cold, it was cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. rob said you left at halftime because my golly it was so cold <laughs> bill i wasn't ready for it i didn't take my blankets in you know, <laughs> sit on the warm bleachers it was cold well, i still appreciate you guys coming down though we'll do nice it again year. next year all right, all right. So let me start yeah, out. Let's get to it. Yeah, let me start out with something. And, and we notice pe your parents starting to decline. So you think, what can I do to help protect their assets? Now, you know, you're, you're taking care of them. You're doing things around the house for them. And mom and dad, let's just say it's mom. Because, again, Bill, we men are the weaker sex. We passed away. We are from, that, yes. 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 So So anyway, so you're taking care of mom, and she wants to pay you. In West Virginia, there's a law that if mom pays you for taking care of you, that's, that's a gift because you do it out of love and affection. So what you have to have is a contract, and it's called a care agreement. So mom will pay you for taking care of her, but there's certain specifics in this contract. Um, Let me, before we go any further, yes. find that. Now, you're talking about a family member. Yes. Does that extend to a friend, a good friend? friend? Yes. Same. Well, it's basically the code section towards family. Yes. But again, if you're taking care of a friend, I'm conservative from that standpoint. I'm going to go ahead and get that contract so nobody can say they were paying me out, you know, out but, of love and affection. But a third party is, is clearly... Uh, it's not a. Uh, uh, it does not need a gift. It does not need a contract for a third party. It does not, but I do okay. it anyway, yeah. just to okay. cover my base. Okay. Now, the Department of Health and Human Resources came back and they said, okay, if you want to have this contract, you need a doctor's statement saying that you're keeping mom or dad out of the nursing home by doing this work. And most doctors are going to do that for you. Second thing you need is you need to uh, make sure the contract is just not like an extended contract. It's going to go on for 50 years. Because a lot of people, oh, we'll pay it up front. Y you can't do that. It has to be you know, a monthly payment. It's got to be the actuarially sound. What I, what I mean by actuarially sound cannot be longer than life expectancy. And you need comparative values. What I mean by comparative values, I go to the Commission on Aging and I ask them, I said, if you sent your workers out to take care of mom, for doing this work. How much would you charge for doing this? That way I've got something to give to the department showing you know, that it, it's compared to value. So, um, but that will allow me to move that money out of mom's name. It's protected because she paid, she didn't gift it to somebody. And, and then on top of that, what if we worry about the children getting that money? I have to watch hitting the table because yeah. my hands do move around a little bit. <laughs> so, so anyway, but uh, if you're worried about children divorce or getting into a car accident, what we can do is a trust from the children back to mom to make sure that money is going to be there for mom for the balance of her life just to supplement mm -hmm. any type of assistance she might receive. So it's there for. Now, Danny, I have a question for you in regards to the terminology of it's a gift. Uh, uh -huh. Federal... Uh, tax laws allow for 
parents to gift to their children, I think something like sixteen or seventeen thousand dollars a year, correct? Well, Rob, that's a good question because it goes up to eighteen on January eighteen thousand as of January. So, would would this count against that gift, or is this a separate? No, this is not a gift. This is for caregiving. This is caregiving. You're paying them. But you mentioned the word gift in the beginning when you talked about this. Yeah, because if mom, if mom, like I said, I know when I would help my mom doing, you know, scraping the roads or doing something along those lines, here, here's $50 for doing that. Mm -hmm. That's considered a gift because I did it out of love and affection. There's a statute actually on point in West Virginia. I, I, I love and have affectionate feelings for the owner, Mr. Hornby. <laughs> Therefore, my so, salary is a gift. Uh, I wouldn't try that. <laughs> I think, I, I think I'm, but based on this terminology, <laughs> we, we I may could be tax-free. Some... But what does this come back and, uh, and haunt someone? Uh, it's a gift. Uh, who's going to uh, – is, is your mom going to be – Taxed for that? No. Are you going to be taxed for no. that? What's, well, what's a pur- what's yeah, the problem? You're hitting gets? two pr- portions yeah. there. One is if mom goes into a nursing home and they see that you've made these gifts, then you're not going to get any public assistance for the nursing home because mom's gifted you the, all this money. Give me, an, give me a perfect, well, not a perfect example. We had some children. Mom was getting ready to go into the nursing home. She liked to donate to the church. So they took 30000 over to the church. Now she goes in the nursing home. You apply for Medicaid assistance. We're not going to give you any assistance for three to four months because mom made that gift to the church. You, you see what I'm saying? So you have to be careful of gifts if, if you're worried about mom receiving any public assistance down the road. You're looking puzzled. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I, I was not aware of this. And the fact that you give to a good cause, a, a, a non-profit, a church, or your, your family, that that's going to come back. Could and, haunt you. Could, yeah, and impact the amount of money you can get from the federal government. For any type of assistance. Yeah. And that's why you want to do planning ahead of time. Yeah. You want to talk about this ahead of time. So uh, let me stop you there. Uh, Danny, every time you've come in, yes, sir. Uh, you have raised another issue that the elderly should, and the family should be aware of. Uh, and each one of them catches me a little bit by surprise, even though I'm in the category of being elderly. Uh, it catches me by surprise. Is there some way that an individual can find out what all the various issues they should look at i know coming to you as a as a as a lawyer would be one way but is there something something in on the internet or any publication that just google it, it Bill. A, a check off no but there's too many <laughs> my, my point is there's too many too many and your point's well taken i mean the, and i don't I'm, I don't like to sell something. You know, I, I want yeah. people to understand and at least start preparing ahead of time. But again, if you Google, the problem is you might get false information out there. You, you understand people don't understand this. Well, and, that, it's, and also you may only get partial information. That's right. You get an answer to what you Google, but yes. there's another dimension. And this is my point that I made earlier. Every time you come in, you bring another consideration to the table consideration that i had not thought about and and bill here's the frustrating thing for me i wish i could cut my brain out and just give it to people so they would understand but i've been doing this 30 years 40 years just because i like it i like helping people but there's so much out there let me go to another example you know that you got to worry about and and i don't want to criticize anybody but Mom goes in the nursing home. Dad's still alive. Well, let's flip that because usually dad's in the nursing home and mom's at home. So mom's entitled to what we call mo- minimum monthly maintenance allowance. People at the nursing home or DHHR, what I see a lot of times won't tell you about it. And what that means is you've got to have, a, mom has to have a minimum amount of money because Congress back, I think it was like 1993, something along that lines, dad goes in the nursing home we've got all of his assets over here mom didn't have any money to take care of her take care of herself so what congress said is you're entitled to, right now it's two thousand two hundred and eighty eight dollars meaning if and you remember mom didn't work back in the day so dad's social security maybe is twenty three hundred per month mom maybe was five hundred and she's trying to make a living or you know a go at it at five hundred per month couldn't do it but a lot of the caseworkers are not helping people and saying yes you can apply for that extra money 
so that she can get up to that point where she can at least have a little bit of a comfortable living. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, but this is an area that I had not heard about before today. I had no aware, not aware it existed. Uh, so, and I, I'm trying to figure out a way, Bill, yeah. that you know maybe um, maybe we can do some. I don't know. <laughs> Rob, I'm always screwed up here. <laughs> so you're good. Just keep rolling. You're rolling, Danny. Keep rolling. Yeah. So, so the problem is, Bill. Maybe we can start sponsoring, you know, seminars. I used to do them all the time, but I can't do them anymore. Well, I didn't for the COVID, you know, because of it was just hard. People didn't want to go out. You know, may, maybe we I can get you to go to some of these seminars with me. I think it's so important that older people can know this without losing their assets. It's so important just to do a few little things, and we've got you covered. Yeah, seminars are very valuable, but, again, seminars uh, – uh, get access to a fairly limited number of people that I understand. people don't go to seminars like they used to, like they used to uh, right. but i but i keep coming back is there a universal checkoff list uh prepared by the federal government or prepared by a well-known lawyer in the area uh, uh <laughs> i.e dan staggers uh that would uh would give an an access or give an insight to what the elderly should be considering elderly or the family should be considering. you know i could do something like that maybe publish in some way I, I think it's important bill i'm going to give you some horror stories over the years you stumble you try to do the best you can you make mistakes but for the longest time a lot the the government wouldn't give you access to this information it was exploring and finding and then all of a sudden it just starts coming along and in and, and you know i put this together i think it's so important for not just elderly people what if you have somebody that's a child that, well when i say a child 20 30 years old has a car accident ends up with special needs you know where's the information for that child to get that or goes into a nursing home because of the special needs they have yeah. And, and not to pick on Maria, which I tend to occasionally, <laughs> uh, I think this is beyond the realm of Google. Uh, because uh, googling because you you ask specific questions uh, while you Google, and here what what I'm trying to seek is there a list of areas uh, that I should be considering or uh, an area list of areas that oh, that you need to be aware of. So. I'll, the best I can say, Bill, is I'll try to create yeah. some sort of document. You know, maybe we can distribute some way, have it here at the radio station. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, they um, could take it to the senior center. Yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. Yeah. So one of the things, and I think you're aware of this, Bill, um, one of the other ancillary services at Hospice of the Panhandle is something that we call a personalized resource guide. Mm. So if an elderly person not ready for hospice, not ready for palliative care, but has some sort of question in particular. We've got a gal, Julie Sayer, who runs our social work um, department, and she will specifically say, and, and admittedly, it's usually, I need caregivers in the home, can you send a caregiver list? But the questions are, you know, multifaceted, and that's a place you can call for a Good. resource. And it's just Good. called Personalized Resource Guide. You got a question, how do I, you know, how do I pick a, a Medicare plan or right. whatever? I mean. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm kind of, I'm drifting in an area that uh, there's a lot of people not well aware of. Plus right. the fact that the, when they do ask these sorts of questions, they and their family have probably entered into an area of anxiety. Yes. They're getting nervous, Absolutely. they're very no confused, question. and no yet question. they don't really know where to go. Bill, Bill, let me follow up with your question too, because if somebody came into me today, I would say two documents that I want to protect you. I want a good power of attorney. What I mean by good power of attorney, I want that gifting paragraph in there. Because if I had your power of attorney and I started taking assets out of your name, the bank's going to look at that like I'm stealing from you. You see what I'm saying? I want uh, I waive the privacy rights financially and medically. I put a medical provision in my power of attorney. I want to record that power of attorney at the courthouse. The reason I want to record it is, do you know how many people come into me and all of a sudden they need it? I had a case in Mineral County here recently. Mom, Dad's in the nursing home. Mom says, Danny, I've lost the POA. I said, no, you didn't. It's recorded at the courthouse, so we're covered. The POA is power of attorney. Mm -hmm. Power of attorney. Yes, sir. I'm so, And you got to trust that person. 
And a lot of people will say, well, I don't want it to kick in until after I become disabled or not able to handle my affairs. My problem with that is, is that many times you need to get moving these assets quickly. Try to track down a doctor to say that you're disabled or unable to handle your affairs could take a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And that could be the difference in like $18,000 per month because you have to pay an extra month at a nursing home. That's why I like it to be effective right away. That's why I say you better trust that person, you know, to, to uh, be your, your power of attorney. I think they have so many names now, power of attorney, attorney, in fact, an agent. <laughs> they're all the same? They're all the same. You know, so you can hear those, you know, the different things. And and a medical power of attorney is very different from the power of attorney. So yes. talk about those two. Well, that's a good point, Maria, because, you know, the, the financial is really what we're looking at as far as the Medicaid, power, yeah. you know, because that allows me to move those assets. That allows me to make decisions as far as transferring real estate. Give you an example, husband and wife. Again, husband goes to the nursing home because... We men are the weaker sex. You know? so, so now they own the, the house as joint tenants with right of survivorship. If mom were to pass away while dad's sitting in a nursing home, you just lost that real estate. Mm -hmm. You see, But with a good power of attorney, I take it out of dad's name and put it in mom's just name. In mom's name. In mm -hmm. mom's name only. But then I go one step further is I'll do, mom will do a transfer on death deed to the kids I just protect that house from any type of claims coming after it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying with mm -hmm. the financial? That's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. The medical is so important. And I need the privacy waiver. Right. Uh, the HIPAA waiver is what we call it. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a case, I'll tell you a funny story. I had a case. Guy calls me and he says, uh, Staggers, your power attorney is worthless. I went to the hospital to get you know, my wife's medical records and I couldn't get it. And I said, slow down. I said, here it is and show him the HIPAA waiver. He calls back 15 minutes later, staggers your genius, I just got everything. <laughs> but you've gotta make sure it's covered, you know, and have all those little provisions. So I come back to you, Bill, and maybe Maria, to Google that, you might not see all that, you know, in, in just one display because they don't know, you know. And That's my point. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. It, it's so many times in- And let me, let me- Go ahead. Uh, chime in here i was just that was sort of facetious about googling <laughs> no, no, something no 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 but, no, but not, your point's it, well taken it, yeah. it is a very well taken maria mm -hmm. it is yeah yes i kind of enjoyed the piling on maria because that statement's <laughs> an old i always enjoy that aspect <laughs> <laughs> no don't stop now we have a couple minutes to go <laughs> yeah, yeah. sorry yeah, that's right. sorry maria. Another mother b queen b <laughs> well let me mm -hmm. let me add a couple Good. more things two minutes for, uh, Dave. okay uh and and this goes to one of your other sponsors prepay your funeral expenses mm -hmm. i mean that's an exempt resource and, and the reason I know with my parents, I had to go down the day after you're sitting there, you're in a fog, and you're trying to do that, and just go ahead and get it taken care of. Um, it just makes it so much easier. Uh, Danny, ahead. we're frequently talking about family with a lot, or individual with a lot of family uh, infrastructure, family support. But there are families that do not have children or children in the area. That's right. Uh, how do these individuals get some protection and that's a good point bill because you go to the church a lot of them have church family yeah. that will step in yeah. a lot of them will have other resources like through their financial investment people mm -hmm. you know that uh, will help them fill Phil McCoy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Brown Funeral Homes. Yeah. Cover, yeah. I'm, cover trying them all help, today. I'm trying to help Rob with all Thank you. Appreciate it. Danny Staggers, attorney <laughs> alone. Let me, let me say one other thing that I want to throw out because this just came to 30 mind. 30 seconds. Dave. Okay. Marriage. So in other words, you, you do a will before you get married. You do a new will, but you don't mention your new wife. That wife, when you pass, can come in and make a big claim against your estate. Yeah. So if you just recently got married, let's make a quick, take a quick look at that will to make sure you've got yourself covered. Ma Maria, how long have you been married? I'll be 40 years uh, next spring. Nice. Bill? But she's married to a judge, so she's got to be careful. <laughs> the judge, judge carries a lot of sway. I'm That's on, right. I'm on That's 34, right. so you got me, Bill. I'm 48 going on 49. Well, you, you win. And we you married did. late in life. You're, you're the champion. Uh, Danny, hang out. Final minute coming up next with Danny Stanger. Sure. 